Okay, this is Karen here, back with Karen Coates, and we are on part 8, actually. The previous video was part 7, but I think I called it part 8, but anyhow. This is the memory game, and we are looking at the add buttons method that actually gets the, the cards to display on our grid, which is on our window. And so, we're going to talk about what's going on right here. We have, from lines 52 to 66, we have a for loop. This is just the standard for loop of iterating through items in an array. And the reason we're using a standard for loop as opposed to an enhanced for each loop, which you may have seen code to it, that's, it looks similar to this. It says for each, um, we're going to say image icon i, for example, of icons do system out print blah 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 and then you can print i to string or whatever okay that's that's what an enhanced i know my typing is type bad right now but that's what an enhanced for loop will look like you can say i dot oh, a get image or something like that blah anyway it doesn't really matter what you say but that's kind of what you do with an enhanced for loop. You would use this if all you're doing is going through and reading the values. But if you actually need to change the value or save something new to the value, then you have to use just the standard for loop. And the standard for loop is not part of functional programming. This is only part of object-oriented programming where you want to change the values and have variation in things. So here's the basics of the, how you build a, a for loop. You need to have at least one integer declared at the beginning. And most people do a generic i, and they set it equal to zero because an array starts counting at zero. Now you can start counting at number one, but for me, I personally find that gets confusing. So I like to start counting at zero. And like you could do that if you had an, an array where in your zero index it was empty and then you only have values from one to eight. But again, like I said, that makes me confused. And then you have, we have a second integer here and you're welcome to separate the second integer with a comma. And you do not have to say integer a second time because you've already declared it here. But then you separate it with a semicolon. And then you, you say integer i is less than picks.length. And then you do a semicolon. And what this says is as long as i is less than the length. Now we know the length is 8 unless you times it by two, as we did for a number of buttons, but we know it's eight. So as long as i is less than eight, then go ahead and do this loop. And then each time you've gone through, because what it'll do is it'll keep going through and doing the code, it'll keep repeating it until i, it's adding one, that's what i plus plus stands for here, adding one to i. So starts out with i being zero and it goes through and does all those things in within your curly brackets here and then after it's done it once then it goes through and i becomes one and then it does it and it keeps checking is it less than eight and it is so then i becomes two and it goes through i becomes three four and then five and then all the way until seven and then when, when it's done with i equals 7 going through, it's already gone through 8 times at this point, but then it's then an i becomes 8, and it says, oh, well, 8 is not less than 8, so we stop. And then it moves on to the next part of your code, okay? And that's how a for loop basically works. And so what it's going to do is the first time it's going to take your icon array, and in the index of 0, because j is zero to start out, it's going to add a new image icon. And in order to do that, you have to say this.getClass.getResource. 
and the re the resource that you pass to it has to be a string a type string and within that string array we're going to reference the i index because the first time through it's going to be zero it's going to be that first item in the index and then each time it iterates through, it'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? And then it stops. All right. And then buttons, J, new J button. Okay. And so what it's doing is it's adding this image icon to the, the buttons. Okay. And it's adding the new J buttons. Actually, it's not adding it quite yet. It's just adding it to the icon series, sorry. So then it's adding new J buttons. Now what this part does here in adding the accent listener, so these two lines, let me just put a little space between them. These two lines are just making the grid of just the plain, plain um, card back that we're, that we're doing. And that's why on buttons J, we're setting the icon to be card back. Card back is just that single line of code that we made. So we're just saying, hey, make me a grid and set all the images equal to the card back. Okay. And we're just doing eight. So rows one and two are coming up because we only had eight in this first loop here. And that's what it's telling it to do. And then we're saying, set background and I just said to set the background color to white and the reason I did that is because out of my image files I have one that's the nutcracker and it's not as wide as the button is and so then I had a weird looking gap on both sides but because my nutcracker image let me show you the nutcracker image has uh, white on either side and sometimes it'll show you the thumbnail down here but it's not showing me right now it, yeah it's not showing me Anyway, I'll show you later. But because it had white, I just went ahead and added white, and then it made it look like it was all one card instead of having it cut down the middle. And then buttons J, it's... Oh, here, it's pulling up my Nutcracker image to show you, which really doesn't help at the moment. It's just this narrow thing instead of a square. So we got this skinny little rectangle, and the sides on either side were empty. And so I wanted to fix that, and... I did that by setting the background color to white of all the buttons. And then I said add buttons J++. So what it's doing is it's it's iterating through J. It's making J increase from 0 to 1 each time we go through the loop. And it does that until we reach 8. Okay? Well, you'll notice right here the code kind of repeat it, it repeats. I mean other than this J minus one, which actually makes J count back down towards zero. Um, other than that, we have identical code from 61 through 65. It's identical to this line from 54 to 58. Now, instead of repeating yourself on the code, Something you can do is you can highlight those items and you can go to source. Actually, do we want to go to source? No, we don't. We want to go to refactor and we want to extract a method. This is something you can do to avoid code repetition. I left it in there so you could see it all at the first, same time, but um, you can hit extract method and call it what you want and what i would call it is make buttons you can call it whatever you want make buttons and it'll substitute it'll substitute the make buttons method signature for the the repeated lines of code and the point of doing that is just to kind of shrink down. See, we make buttons is right here, and we still have the same code, and it returns J. And that's what J's job does, and it takes in an integer of type J. And that's because I took it 
J looks a little weird, but it's because I took it from this for loop right here. And so you don't have to do this. This is just an option that you have. And so let me just double check something real quick here. And so it includes the add buttons, J++. So I can just say make buttons and pass in parameter J. Whoops, sorry. For this line of code. This just does this. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Sorry. This just does the same thing, but it I'm refactoring it or extracting it to um, just kind of save how much stuff is crammed into my constructor. And I forgot the S, so we'll add that in there. Okay, so basically it's doing it twice. But what it's doing is it's doing the first eight and then it's doing the second eight, counting back from eight down to zero. That's pretty much what's happening here with the logic. But then it wouldn't be a very fun game if it if the first two rows were always the same eight images and the second two rows were just a repeat of the same images. That wouldn't be a very fun game. You'd pick up on that pattern really fast. And so to make it random so that it mix and matches which cards go where, just like a real card game, we have, oh, well, let me, let me explain the randomization in the next video because we were already at 11 minutes. So actually I'll just hurry and explain it really fast and then make this a 15 minute video. So we're going to call the random class and it's a Java util class. And this is how we get a, a random number. And we're just going to call it RND for the variable name equals new random. And we're going to say for integer i, so we got another regular for loop here, equals zero. i is less than the number of buttons, i plus plus. And then this is what we want you to do. And we can use i and j just like we did up here because we're outside of the curly brace and so it resets the values. We're outside the scope and we so we can repeat ourselves. So integer j equals random, which is that little variable there, dot next integer and then it's the number of buttons. And if you re recall from above, the number of buttons is pix.length times two. So it's actually 16 at this point. And so we're gonna store in our temp array, the images from icons i, or the paths to the images from icons i. And then icons i, we're gonna set that equal to icons j, okay? And we, as we know, i starts at zero, and j starts at 16, but because it's random, it could be any number from 0 to 16, or sorry, from 1 to 16. My apologies. So any anywhere in there is what it can be. And so it's going to go ahead and assign random numbers to it, and then icons j equals temp. And so what we're doing is we're creating a temporary array so that Every time we play the game, it has a different random mix of the pictures. So basically it's shuffling them for us. And that's the purpose of these lines of code. Okay. And then in order for the image to display for a couple of seconds before it flips back to the card back, we're going to run my timer. And that's the timer class that we set up above. And so we declared it above and now we're initializing it with the value. We're saying new timer and we're setting it to a thousand, which is a thousand milliseconds. And then and the other parameter we pass to it is the new timer listener with parentheses. And that's all we need to make the cards uh, appear in a random order and kind of shuffle and then flip back over. And now down here in our next video, we're going to talk about the timer listener and the code that we need to write to implement that. So thanks for watching and we'll come back in our next video with the timer listener as well as the image button listener. And that's what makes it respond to your clicks. Okay, so thanks for watching and we'll continue with our two listeners.